probably too windy today. Look at these knuckleheads. Getting chance. Oh, she's a windy one today, folks. So my ink birds, ink birds have turned up. These have come from China in about six days. Not as good though as the heat sink. I didn't know until I spoke to Andy. Came from America in two days. Hey, eh? imagine that. So what I'm gonna do is switch these bad boys out. And although the mash temp doesn't really need an ink bird in there. I think it would be nice to have one in simply because it'll look the part. And I want to get rid of these Rex C100s. They are just chintzy to say the least. So we'll quickly swap those out. And the panel's ready to go on the wall. So that's going to involve a little bit of wizardry in terms of pulling all this lot out and a bit of sunlight today look so we're going to pull all this out and we're going to paint that wall as best we can should really get down in there as well all these cables are going to have to come off the elements have got to come out of the tank so yeah we may as well crack on haven't we and get it done if it's got to be done it's got to be done so We'll give all this a nice little clean down and I think the pipe work can stay as it is. I might change how that electrical cable's running along there. I've got some trunking. I might pop it in a little bit of trunking and just tidy it up a little bit. There's a bit of sunshine coming from that window, isn't there, that's causing haze. It's not really bright outside, but it's just enough to throw the camera off a touch. Anyway, I'm just going to get cracking with the knacking like. Well, I have to move the HLT and it's full, so unfortunately I'm going to have to dump 500 litres. It's not ideal, uh, but I just simply don't have time to pump it into another tank and wait. So, uh, yeah, out she comes. And this is, of course, the quickest way to do it. But it does give the floor a good clean, which is a bonus. Last time I did this, it it washed out little bits of stuff that was underneath here that I didn't know was there. She's gone. Taking us a little bit longer than anticipated, this has. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've pulled everything out. Plate chillers up the yard. HLT sat here. Oh, you saw us empty it, didn't you, I guess? And uh, that's the new bad boy on the wall. I tell you what, it looks a, a lot more professional than, uh, than the other one. Doesn't need painting, I don't think. It's like we sprayed that other one black just for the sake of spraying it black. I don't think it needed it at all. So at the minute, we're just pulling the tails into the rotary valve valves, isolators, and uh, terminating them in there. Honestly, these boxes, I've just been saying to myself, why don't they just make them just like 10 mil bigger all the way around? And they'll be so easy to use. You've got to get all these wires that have got to go past this little screw terminal. Even if they put the screws in the corners, they wouldn't necessarily be in your way. Not very well designed, but yeah, well, it is what it is, isn't it? I suppose they're trying to make them as small as possible to fit into, like, you know, areas out of the way. But, you see, having it small and tight like this, it compromises your terminals because you can never be 100% sure that you're in. Obviously, I'll just do uh, 
uh, a test with the old multifunction meter there to make sure that we've got all the right numbers otherwise I'd be in here with pliers just giving them a little tug sailor just to see if any of the wires come out or something like that so anyway box on the wall oh we've uh, taken all the pipe work off as well Let's zoom out and have a look painted the wall and then also instead of just having them dodgy wires we've put some nice trunking on the wall and we've terminated all our electrical sockets on trunking that's going to shoot across there and that's going to go into we're going to shoe this sorry Jim into uh, into this socket here because it's the end of a feed and this is basically just running the kettle and toaster if we have it the um, vac sealer in the fridge so it's not really pulling a lot of power whereas before we were coming out of this socket here which has already got three lines terminated into it which is overkill this is armoured cable that runs throughout the building I didn't install any of this and it is a little bit shoddy so that's got quite a bit of load on it actually that basically does it's a ring main all the way around the building and yeah it's uh, probably best I don't pull up pull any more power off of it so doing that means we've just reduced the load by four sockets and then also over here we've got a socket there and some sockets up there what the tilt TV is plugged into and the fly zapper and they're separate off of that ring before that ring did return down this wall and everyone would have been loaded on it so getting rid of that is a benefit you can see it it comes all the way around here uh, there's a that's a separate one that actually but it did come along this back wall and there were two sockets over there in fact it's still there it's still there look there it is that's the end of the line oh, I'm zoomed out a little bit just behind there so it's got the chillers plugged into that basically all the chilling equipment's plugged into that ring so if we don't have any pumps plugged into it or the water heater probably better less load I guess anyway I'm sure you didn't need to know all that but it's certainly filled in five minutes of the vlog so <laughs> I win I'm just terminating the final five wires and before I wrap it up and hide it, I thought I'd just show you these. Because this is stranded wire, and when you crush them into something such as um, the terminal blocks on a rotary isolator, these wires can flatten out and become very, very thin and spread out and basically slip out of the contacts. It could be one of the reasons why we had the um, burning issue on the on the uh, socket in the first instance so we're going to stick these 2.5 mil ferrules on there and that bunches the wires together and prevents it from slipping it's better than soldering the wire actually I've had a look at some videos on YouTube and there are a few ways of approaching this you just bung them in as they are you can solder the wire or you can put ferrules on and ferrules seem to be recommended as the best option so it's just a case of just twisting the wire up bunching them up and I don't have um, a fancy tool for crimping these on but the terminal blocks themselves will do the majority of the crimp work so if I just rotate that way and then all I'm doing is just pinching that with the tip of these pliers which isn't the strongest mechanical fix granted but it's strong enough I can't pull that off so it's strong enough until it gets in there and then when we clamp this down to the clamp this down to the correct torque that's what will take care of the final crimping and well they ain't coming off in a hurry let's put it that way it's got late it seems to have got away from me a little bit this has 633 so everything's in how neat 
How neat does that look? I think it looks relatively neat, eh? I think that looks way neater than the last panel. Oh, I've got a cover to put on there. Well, let's just go and find that cover then. We'll just go in the workshop. I've turned the lights off because obviously I'm going to be going home shortly. Here it is, look. So let's just put this last cover on that slotted trunk in. I really do like that slotted trunk in. There we go. Can we do it one handed? I think we can. Oh well you look at that. So I don't think I don't know if I mentioned it in another video. I've left these tails slightly long on the um probe the temperature probe wires just in case the shielding needs to be grounded. I don't know yet. So let's uh lock her up and Give her a quick whirl. Control panel on. So that's on, but there's no power to any elements. And then we'll turn the HLT on. So the HLT is usually on all the time. We turn the boil kettle elements off on the wall just in case there's any leakage current. Usually because the HLT is always submerged, the boil kettle isn't. So if anything fails close circuit at least it's got water on it then you can see obviously there's no current but there is 50 Hertz and 200 at 424 27 and 26 volts respectively and we've got the HLT mash lights they're not wired up yet it should be HLT lights I'm going to, have to change that boil these should light up though because they're relay operated there we go and alarm if you fancy it but there we are and then also that's working it's all cushy it's all nice and cushy and then the clock for the auto off woof there we go off on and back on she does look nice doesn't she I'm really chuffed with it. So I've still got to wire in. Oh, I've got that cable in there, look, the outlet. So I've still got to do the cables for the elements. In fact, let me turn all this off. And we'll go and have a look at the elements. So here they are on the floor, 12 kilowatt elements. We're going to take this armoured cable off and change it out for flex. 5 core flex, so we've got 1 core for the earth, 1 core for the neutral, because they're wired in 3 wire star at the minute, and they want to be 4 wire star, I think. And then, uh, yeah, we'll give them all a nice good clean up before they go back in, and we'll slide them back in. To give you an idea, there's my hand for scale, so they are about 900 long, and, well, they, they've not skipped a beat since we put them in actually they've been really good they were from a company called TP Fay T P F A Y Fay and whilst they're not the cheapest element producers out there they are one of the best they're regarded as one of the best in the brewing industry anyway you can also get stainless steel bosses as well which when we come to upgrade I'll probably do because then they'll stand up better to caustics and the like. Well, no acids, realistically, when you're cleaning in place. But in all honesty, um, we only rinse the boil kettle with acid for a brief amount of time after every CIP cycle, and then it's rinsed and uh, or filled with beer. So we've not had any issues with the brass being eaten away. And, uh, yeah, I think... It's pretty much run, run of the mill, having uh, having them brass bosses on these elements. Right, anyway, I think that's it. We're going to wrap it up, boys and girls, because, well, I've been here a long time, and uh, 
yeah, it'll be it'll be seven o'clock by the time I get home, and I'm ready for a beer. See you on the next one. Freaking right, you will. Oh, I just thought I'd make you jealous, boys and girls. We've got sticky Chinese belly pork on a bed of green vegetables. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you all tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, doesn't that look bloody nice? Oh, and uh, of course, proof of concept. And why not? Cheers.